as we gather in this place, we give thanks for the Wadawurrung people. We acknowledge the commitment their ancestors made across the generations to nurturing this land. Together, may we walk into the future, recognising the sacred footsteps that continue to lead us to the promise of heaven. to this video from St Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton in Geelong. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement. In the last video, last week, we looked at uh, prayer and the significant gift and resource it is for us as human beings. In fact, a life-giving resource. This week, we're going to focus on the value of finding sanctuary in life, the place of a sanctuary in our lives. Now, if you want to find out more about uh, St Luke's Uniting Church, what's happening or isn't happening because of COVID, if you want to contact us or leave a message, the best way to do that is to use our website, which is stlukesuca.org.au. Let's take a moment or two now to recognise that we're in the presence of the living God and to offer God prayer prayer in which we seek to offer God praise, to call God to come and work in our lives to bring renewal. These prayers that I'm offering, the two short prayers, come from a couple of sources. One is the United Church of Christ in the US, and the other comes from the Reverend Abbey's website, The Long and Winding Road. Let's pray. Faithful God, you draw near to us in our joy and in our grief in our hope and in our despair. When we are bowed down, you raise us anew. We turn to you now in search of your healing touch. In you is found true sanctuary. Indeed, God of compassion and love, open our eyes, dispel our fears. Show us the real life you offer through the risen, crucified one, Jesus Christ. Merciful God, we thank you that you deal with us according to your unwavering love and according to your abundant mercy. Help us to name our need of you. Help us to be honest about the sin and the guilt we have carried for too long. Write in the deepest recesses of our beings the good news of your forgiveness and grace. Free us to live the abundant lives you desire for each of us lives marked by love of you, neighbour and self. Indeed, create in us clean hearts, renew your spirit within us, restore us to the joy of your salvation and sustain us in a willing spirit. And we offer these our prayers in the name of Christ. Amen. Let's listen now to two short passages of scripture. The first of these comes from the Old Testament book of Lamentations. Now you probably know that uh, the book of Lamentations is a kind of a poetic outpouring of woe by the writer following the sacking of Jerusalem by the armies of King Nebuchadnezzar II. But then in the midst of a seemingly endless cry of lament and despair, the writer finds a sense of hope a place of sanctuary, as it were, in the knowledge that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. The second passage comes from the Gospel of Matthew. These are words of comfort from Jesus. These words are Jesus offering us sanctuary. Reading from Lamentations 3, verses 19 to 24. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind 
and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The gospel reading this morning is from Matthew 11, verses 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you hear the word sanctuary, what comes to mind? As a child, I had one particular definition that sort of sat with me. And that was because we lived in Lara and up the road was Serendip Sanctuary, a place that uh, was a place of safety for uh, wildlife, particularly birds that were uh, near extinction. But as I've learned since, of course, the word sanctuary has a range of meanings, some of which are faith related. The original Latin words from which we gain the English word sanctuary relate to sacred or holy places. For the people of Israel, the ancient people of Israel, the most significant of sanctuaries, of holy places, was the Holy of Holies, right in the centre of the temple in Jerusalem. And it was a place that was so holy that the high priest only entered it once a year, and that was on the Day of Atonement. Still with buildings for a moment, Christian church buildings have areas that are often referred to as the sanctuary. Some Christian traditions refer to the space where the Holy Communion is celebrated as the sanctuary. At St Luke's, along with many other Protestant churches, we refer to the whole worship space as the sanctuary. You probably know too that, of course, historically church buildings have been valued and indeed respected as places of safe haven, sanctuary in that sense, places that people on the run can escape to including those running because they were on the losing side of wars. And I believe some countries still have laws about the right of sanctuary for those who have asked for safekeeping in a church building. And of course, we still use similar language today to speak about offering sanctuary to those fleeing danger, fleeing a war, fleeing the threat of violence. So the notion of sanctuary evokes a sense of a genuinely safe place but also it has a sense in which it refers to a place where God is close. In these days of COVID where do you go to? What do you do to find a place of sanctuary in your life? By the way I think one place not to go is the endless cycle of uh, news and media reports that actually can be anything but a place of sanctuary. But maybe you find solace and sanctuary in the world of music, perhaps not in heavy metal or dance music, but pieces of music that speak to the soul and soothe the spirit. Karl Barth, the 20th century Swiss reformed theologian, would listen to Mozart, Mozart each day before he began to write. For me, the music from some films can have a healing power. One piece that I know touches many in this way is Gabriel's Oboe from the film The Mission and written by the late great Italian composer Ennio Morricone. You can find it on YouTube if you want to listen to it. It has a, a deeply moving kind of feel about it that can be healing and can just take the stress away. Perhaps your place of sanctuary is just that, a place 
a windswept beach, a cosy old sofa or chair like this one, the scent of the spring flowers as you wander a garden path. Perhaps sanctuary for you is having a friend who will genuinely listen to you. And even with the current restrictions, you can phone a friend or go for a walk with a friend. Perhaps sanctuary for you is calling to mind special events from times past. My, uh, my mother has often said to me how she's appreciated going through some photo albums and wonderful memories have come flowing back to her. Many people have places of sanctuary to where they go to pray and to be open to the presence of God. Perhaps you have a place that you value as a place to re retreat to and to pray. Not that you need to go anywhere particularly special to find sanctuary in the presence of the God we meet in the person of Jesus Christ, because God is always with us. The steadfast love of the Lord, as the writer of Lamentations told us, never ceases. In these COVID days, when we're buffeted daily with bad news, we need sanctuary, safe havens. Now, while Jesus does not promise that the Christian walk is going to be easy, remember how he spoke to the disciples about taking up their crosses, he did offer plenty of words of hope and comfort, words that promise sanctuary. As we heard from Matthew's Gospel a little earlier, Jesus said to his disciples, and he says to us, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. In the life and love we find in Jesus, there is a promise of sanctuary in this world and in the next. Sisters and brothers, make time. Time to, be, to, 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 to come aside, to find a place, to find sanctuary to allow the God of steadfast love to minister healing and hope to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you embrace all time and eternity in your love. But through, through Jesus, we know you are concerned for each one of us. Hear our prayers for our brothers and sisters in the human family who this day are enduring hard times. Bless those near us or far away whose very being is torn by grief. Come to them through the arms and words of others that they may be embraced with your comfort. Bless those near to us or far away who are suffering from injury or disease, especially those with COVID-19. May they receive both medical care and the inner resources to regain their health. Bless those near us or far away who are finding the impact of COVID-19 on their lives and livelihoods just so hard. We pray you might bless leaders, medical authorities, and practitioners, scientists, all who seek to bring an end to this pandemic. Bless those near or far away who are unjustly treated socially or politically at work or at home, free or captive. Bring justice and rehabilitation, we pray. Bless those near us or far away who flee oppression and violence. We pray that they might find genuine sanctuary and we think at this time particularly of the people of Afghanistan. Bless those near us or far away who are seeking something to put their faith in. May they find the abundant life found in Christ Jesus. Bless those known to us with needs, whether they be near or far away. Help us to uphold each person in prayer and to offer the appropriate support. Holy God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, please assist us to turn our good intentions into deeds and to carry our prayers over into all the coming and going of this week ahead of us. 
through Christ our model and our enabler. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You might be able to tell that I'm in the garden now um, and you can hear the rain pitter-pattering on the roof. Rain's such a wonderful, cleansing, renewing thing, isn't it? Life-giving. As you go into the week, stay safe and know that wherever you go, God goes with you. Hear the words of Desmond Tutu. Go in peace and remember, goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.